some point in the future, there's going to be a podcast titled Inappropriate Jokes with Brad and Paul. <laughs> and it's just going to be just 18 hours of all the pre-podcast and, video yeah. roll mm-hmm. that exists. Actually, I know you well enough to be worried that you might have saved all of that. Of course. I mean, (laughs) you know, when you go start a political career and I need some favors, Mm -hmm. okay, Paul, I got the video. Shocking new video has emerged. (laughs) 18 hours of it, apparently. Yeah. yeah. God, he just never shut up, did he? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, well. Uh, So it's Friday (laughs) before a holiday here in the U.S. Well, I guess around the world, Catholic countries. Places, right. people. I don't know. Easter. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not a lot going on other than... So, I, Paul, I have solved a mystery. Okay. Solved it. Good. Do you remember many months ago, Swift Key disappeared from iOS mm-hmm. and app stores and everything else like that? It disappeared. And then they said, just kidding. Yeah. And then, and then all of a sudden, it's like, oh, no, 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 we're bringing it back. We're bringing it back. Yep. Well, here, here's my hypothesis. I believe internally at Microsoft several months ago, right. a memo went out and said, justify why your business should exist and bring AI to it. Right. And so that's why every org across Microsoft is ramming AI in and somebody had Swift key and they're like, no, 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 no. You know that keyboard thing we have? Well, we'll, we'll put it in that. And they brought it right back. And now you can bing AI it from your whatever Swift key thing. Yeah. I mean, regardless of whatever, anything else, and maybe irregardless, I think those two words are the same. Uh, I don't know why they got rid of SwiftKey in the first place, and only on iOS. Yeah, it was. Yeah. I think it's one of those things, there's like so many different things that they now own, if someone just forgot about it, and they're like, oh yeah, we could probably do that. Right. So, there was a... uh, it interesting, and I'm going to butcher this up now. I can't because mm-hmm. I can't find it because I read it on my phone, and then of course trying to find it on my computer, whatever. Mm-hmm. It was something to the effect of that for every one percent increase in Bing AI or Bing search marketplace like market share yep. is a billion dollars in revenue for Microsoft. So every one percent that they can grow, and this came out of a, a, a quote from like a. a Somebody were doing research on the Wall Street Journal interview where Sundar yeah. is now like on a media tour because it's like, hey, Google's mm-hmm. kind of fallen, mm-hmm. you know, out of favor here real quick because of this AI stuff. Yeah, mm-hmm. which is when Microsoft's looking at it. I mean, if that's true, mm-hmm. makes sense why they are going so crazy with this. I have the yeah, I have the same rough number in my head. Um, for some reason, I don't mm-hmm. remember. I also have this number in my head that. Uh, AI-based search queries are 10x more expensive than that would standard make. search queries. Again, I don't, I can't cite the source for that, but I, you know, we, I think we can all agree there that both, whether those numbers are both accurate or not, they're, you know, roughly in the ballpark kind of thing. So yeah, um, there was a, uh, geez, there's a, I'm probably gonna have to write about this. There was mm-hmm. an article in the New York Times today. New York Times? Yeah. That went into, like, why would Microsoft and Google, these, you know, conservative tech giants that had ethics AI boards and had internal people telling them for years not to release this stuff, mm-hmm. like, why would they have done it? And they, there's a there's a couple of quotes from a guy internally. This is not someone who talked to the New York Times, but it was uh, internal emails uh, that the New York Times viewed. And I've never heard this guy's name, and I don't remember it anyway. It doesn't matter. But he, <laughs> he just said two things that were, like, just freaking nuts. And... Um, one of them was some. Again, I'm paraphrasing here. It's not in front of me, but he said something like, "There is there is no excuse for not releasing something today that we can fix tomorrow." Mm. And it was like, "What?" And then he also said, "This is this is the best one though." Well, that one's pretty good too. But he said, uh, "He goes throughout the history of our industry, there are so many examples of the first to come to market is the one who wins that market and leads." And um, and sometimes that is decided by a matter of weeks. And I thought to myself, well, that's fascinating because I can't actually think of a single instance of when that's happened. In fact, somebody wrote something called The Innovator's Dilemma Mm -hmm. describing the exact opposite of that condition. So, for example, we could just off the top of our heads mention such things as Google did not invent search. Microsoft did not invent the GUI. 
Apple mm-hmm. did not invent the smartphone. Amazon did not invent e-commerce. You could go on and on and on. I just I just rattled those off without even I didn't look anything up. I didn't have to think mm-hmm. about it. That that statement is so fundamentally stupid. It's only exceeded by a quote from an interview with Satya Nadella in February, where he said he wasn't sure about AI, and then they, he went down for another demo, and they showed him there, there was a um, I'm going to get the the origin wrong, but I'm going to call it a Pakistani poem. It doesn't really matter. Uh, but some, some, maybe it was an Indian, something, some mm-hmm. form of Indian language poem and it translated it into another language. And he said, that's it. We, we've done it. And I, I, I'm sorry. Hmm. You understand that language translation has been around for many years. It yeah. has nothing to do with AI language. Translation is a, is like a database lookup. <laughs> like you, th- the thing that convinced the guy that runs Microsoft that AI was ready was that you translated something from one language into another? Has this guy not heard of Duolingo? Like, are you kidding me? Rosetta Stone? Google Search? Also Bing Search, by the way? How, how do you say this word in whatever language yeah, in some other all... language? is something I Google every day I'm in Mexico. Are you kidding me? So that's our industry, Brad. That's how, that's how smart the leadership is at these companies. Here's something, and you touched on this at the very beginning, um, Mm -hmm. that has to get solved, and it it has not been solved yet. These search queries, and I'll give an example, are very expensive, like extremely expensive compared to a traditional, tell me 10 recipes about whatever. Example, I was talking on Twitter yesterday with Owen Williams. We used to write together back on Neowin or whatever. Okay. Uh, He took a video, put Mm -hmm. it into ChatGPT, and said, turn this into a GIF. And it did it. Now, <laughs> granted, that whole process is amazing. Oh, my but God. But how many GPUs were sacrificed at the altar yeah. of turn this into a GIF for yeah, that single query? Yeah, somewhere in the middle of Montana, lights dimmed as the it, exactly. uh, data like, center this is, uh, turned its attention to this stupid query. It, this is one person. This is – um. Uh, it's, it's hard to roll back the clock or put the genie back in the bottle, whatever you want to call it. But um, – when you make something available for free and then weeks, months, years later say, you know what, uh, actually this is costing us a lot of money or there's some value to this or now that you've grown used to using this project product or whatever, now we're going to charge you for it? Mm-hmm. Uh, boy, I don't it's know tough. how many ads you'd have to put on Bing to make this thing well, make that, sense. That's what I mean. Like, you know, I, yeah, th- I don't think you can. I don't think it's possible to monetize it. So there's, there's um, two things that are going to happen. One, yeah. with exactly what you said, in between every query, you're not going to get a 30-second video ad that you cannot skip because that's the only right. way they there can try go. to break yeah, even. Yeah, remember, that used to be a thing, by the way. Yeah. Uh, you're about to get online here in the airport, but first, please watch this video from yeah. our sponsor. Right. Well, Delta does it, too. If you connect online mm-hmm. on their planes, it's you free now. Watch oh, but okay. I think it's a, even a Delta ad, so it's not as terrible. But it's like you log in with your SkyMiles account, and then there's a video, and you can't get to the web. But anyways, yeah. the other thing is potentially Microsoft is betting that the cost of each query yes. over time will go down and that they're just going to ride this thing out and then eventually it'll be yeah. at a point where ads can support it, but it's definitely obviously. Not I, um, I, I, since this has happened, I've, um, I've explored what it means to be a conspiracy theorist uh, because I've come up with all these re- like, because you have to imagine why, like in other words, the question we asked up front, which is the question the New York Times is now finally asking, which is the question we've all been asking, is what, why is why are they doing this now? Like, what happened that made this happen now, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. And just if you have any knowledge of the, our industry or any knowledge of these companies, you could come up with theories that may or may not touch on the edge of some truth or something, mm-hmm. which is how conspiracy theories happen, right? So I, normally I decry this sort of thing, and I probably should be doing so now. But of course it's hard for me because I, I've never heard like that Satya Nadella story. That um, I don't think anyone would read that and say, "Oh, okay, yeah, no, that that makes sense. That's why you did." It. Like it, did, like I've never heard something where I say, "Yeah, okay, like I get it." And um, one of my theories, so you've just um, caused me to uh, branch a theory, right? Mm-hmm. So on, on Windows Weekly the other day, I, I Richard Campbell was talking about something, and I said, you know, you've you've put a new idea into my brain. And, and the, the idea, f- for the reason, right, was 
Microsoft could see how bad the industry was going to be doing over the next X number of quarters, and the fall off was going to be horrible. It, the mm -hmm. fall off was going to be worse than the bump that they got from the pandemic. And they were like, Satya Nadella said, look, we need some way to even this out a little bit. What do we got? And they're like, you know, we've really bumped the stock right now is this AI thing. And it's like, throw caution to the wind, right? The, sure. There's some sense to that. But here's here's what you just put in my brain. And it's related to the cost. The next couple of quarters are going to be terrible or, you know, down or whatever it is. Not as good as anyone wants. You know what? Let's let's throw this AI crap into it. it the cost of it will get lost in all the other awfulness. Mm -hmm. And we already know the quarter is going to tank anyway. Let's suck up the cost now while it doesn't matter, right? It's like um, when things are going south, if Microsoft has to have a uh, – uh, you know, swallow the cost of a company acquisition, whatever. It's mm -hmm. like you do it all at once. You just like just let's just yeah. suck it up now. Get it over with. Yeah, have that one bad quarter. So there's another theory. Those two theories are completely contradictory, by the way, <laughs> which is what makes conspiracy theories awesome. Mm -hmm. um, they're not compatible. They're not, you know, complementary in any way. Uh, but each of them, I would imagine, sounds plausible to people, right? I mean, it sounds plausible to me. Like either one of them could be the reason. I. Are they? Or is one right? Yeah. Or is it something? I, you know, just, we, we can only guess, right? Then I don't. It's going to be a while. I mean, someday we're going to get this little insider scoop. The story will come out. Like here's the here's what really happened. You know, mm -hmm. and it's not going to be that they translated a poem into Urdu or whatever it was. It's that's nonsense. It's it's there's something else going on. Yep, yeah. I, I don't think you're wrong. I think. The next couple of quarters are going to be interesting, but Microsoft's going to be like, look, we are we have momentum in search. We can penetrate Google and, and found yep. a weakness. They'll talk about the, the business opportunity, which is in the multi-billions. Yep. They'll talk about the investment cost, which is the stuff we're talking about, which is going to be in the billions. There's no doubt yep. about it. This is going to cost them money. Um, Microsoft's a big company. They can suck it up. This is, a, this is absolutely a financial opportunity for this company. This is the type of investment that Microsoft and Google and Amazon, which, by the way, completely silent for some reason, mm -hmm. uh, and Apple could make, right? And uh, Facebook, too, Meta, to a lesser degree, I guess. Um, but there aren't that, that's pretty much the... NVIDIA's in there somewhere, maybe a little bit. You know? NVIDIA's in there just hawking GPUs at this point. <laughs> yeah, but they're right, but they're still part of the... You know, they're part yeah. of it, and uh, I... Uh, that's interesting. I don't know. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. So we have three days to do it. Hopefully they solve it by Tuesday. <laughs>